What's happening, good people, on Thursday night? And uh, this is another episode of Thursday Night Live Fly Time, and as you can see, the show has got an upgrade. Tim Hepworth on steroids. No, I think you might have ate Tim Hepworth. (laughs) (laughs) Well, folks, uh, some things have been changing around here, and uh, yeah, we just thought... You know, how do we get Tim's nails to look better? Maybe we just go find a whole new person. Check out these bad boys. Uh, Hey, so um, this is our new tire tonight. Uh, We want to welcome all the good folks down at Tracks Pub. Uh, And for everybody else who's just tuning in, let us know where you're from. And what you're supposed to make fun of my music. That's what Tim does. I like, but I like your music, dude. That's. It's not the same. <laughs> it's not the same. What are we drinking? Make fun. <laughs> well, we're drinking from Fallen Timber Meadery. A Mejito. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> See, you know what it is. I can't do it because my camera has a little bit of an infatuation with me. And uh, What does it sound like, though? Oh. You you came for the asthma, didn't you? I, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, that's, you're, you're speechless. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about that. You came, you came for the asthma. So, uh, Chaz, today uh, we'll be tying up a merkin permit crab. So we're gonna tie two flies today, and then the one we call the devil bug. And the devil bug is really a fascinating uh, dry fly pattern. Why don't you tell us about it, Chaz? Devil bug? Well, I can tell you nothing about it. Never tied it. Never heard of it. Oh, that's good. That is really good. It's a symphony in your mouth. That is an orchestra. Or- orchestra. Orchestra in my mouth. I didn't want to say something else like <laughs> Oreo or. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, bro, right? Yeah, this Local. is refreshing honey, mint and lime, a mead hydromel. Maybe hydromel is French. Maybe I don't know. Everything in Canada, folks, has. French and English, so be careful when you're telling people what you're drinking. Sometimes it's milk lay. It's fantastic. But, uh, yeah, so Chaz, why don't you tell the folks, the good folks, the good people a little bit about uh, where you're from, who you are, and uh, what you're going to bring to the show for the next nine or ten episodes. 
Sweet. So yeah, Chas Waite, Edmonton, Alberta, uh, fly fishing fanatic. Um, I'm about 300 pounds heavier than Tim Hepworth. I think I can take him in a fight. I, you did. That's, he was trying to come to the show tonight, and you fought him. But you it fought happens. Him, you beat him off. It happens. You beat. I saw you beating him off. <laughs> and out, then I ate him. Out, out there. <laughs> 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 well, folks, it's going to be a fun night. Uh, we got everybody down at Tracks Pub, and it's pizza night there. So order yourself a pizza, grab yourself a drink, and as soon as the show's over, uh, me and Chaz will be down there to hang out with you. I don't know where Tim is. We don't really care. Uh, but let's say thanks to our sponsors. the amount of time we spend in front of our vices. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, You were all worried that he beat me <laughs> off. Uh, well, it's he did. Well, well played, you guys. And then you I didn't know this. I didn't know this happened. It's a good point. And we they just, hoodwinked him. They hoodwinked me as there was some hooding. Yeah. Well, wow. I don't know if we made people more disappointed because everybody was getting pumped for Chaz to tie. Well, I hope they're disappointed that I wasn't. And his to tie. nails looked great, and I thought, what a perfect candidate. If we can't fix. I couldn't have asked for a better replacement. Tim's nails. We might as well just fix Tim. The shocks in my chair aren't doing so good, though. <laughs> Chaz. <laughs> I am Tim on steroids. So, yeah, obviously, uh, Chaz is in town. He's down at yes, Trax Pub. So hopefully we want to give that. a shout out to all of the fine folks at Trax Pub. All of the fine folks in the comments and from all over the world. We got Detroit, Colorado. Uh... Edmonton. Montana, Edmonton. Where else do we got? I'm just going through all know, the comments here because that idea before was a bit of a skit that we pre recorded just so nobody gets disappointed. <laughs> or if you're at tracks and you're sitting beside Chaz, you're wondering How what kind of drugs that? are you on today? <laughs> Abbotsford, um, Illinois. Illinois, Abbotsford, Scott Scott's out on the West Coast is the best coast. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, yeah, and if you're at Trax Pub, there's going to be fun there with uh -huh, pizza uh -huh. at Trax Pub. So what's really cool about that is that the baking cam should hopefully make all of you guys super excited at Trax Pub because it is two for one pizza down there. Oh. So let's head over to the baking cam. Oh, Check baby. out what we got. We got some pizza. We got Za. Trax Pub, arguably the best pizza. You know, we've never side. ordered it. Every, every time we go there, we never get any. Well, tonight is your night, Tim. Tonight's the night. Tonight's the night. And if Shelly Ellenson and Scott Nelson are in town, they've won themselves a $50 gift card each for Trax Pub. Boom. Nice. So that's kind of the bacon cam there, folks. Make you hungry for some za, pizza, <laughs> for some za. beer, and fly time. I don't really know. Don't forget uh, the Keith mead. Keith Branter is also drinking mead yeah. and sundry, and Keith did not make it to Tracks Pub, so uh, friends off. This stuff is good. I've got the Mr. Pink mead. Oh, yeah. So one of these days, our meetup at Tracks Pub is not going to blizzard because it is not great out there right Every now. single time, literally every time that we have a little uh, hangout sesh, the weather sucks. Yeah, so the first fly that we're going to tie is the Merkin Permit Crab. Yeah. Because it is... Um, a little bit more time consuming than the other. So you know that code that was flying across the screen is not valid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Whoopsie daisy. Whoops. 
Swoops, you can enter it. It's not going to work. And also because almost everything is gone. There's a couple more shirts left, smalls, mediums. But the good news is within a week, I think we'll have our mock-ups for the next uh, three shirts nice. that are coming up. So, but yeah, we're here to tie flies. We're here to drink beer. We're here to tell lies and a lot of other things <laughs> like bingo. Like bingo. Do you have a <sighs> bingo? Do you have a heart big enough to be broken and put back together again? Your bingo cards, folks. Make sure you download them. The same bingo cards from the last extant amount of weeks will work. <laughs> uh, yeah, Terry Sather's off on. to Drayton. He's away from Sylvan, and he's tying in a hotel, motel. Oh, nice. in. Uh, Merkin is, I believe, the, the name that the... Who's the guy that tied that? I don't know. Well, I'm looking know. this up. <clears throat> you look it up. Well, I'm, uh, you're going to tell the folks kind of briefly what Thursday Night Live is. And uh, if they're new here, fill yeah. them in. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, Thursday Night Live, what is it? Well, every Thursday we meet uh, with this awesome group of people online virtually. Um, and we tie a couple flies. Like Dana said, we kind of BS a bit. Have a, a time of basically fellowship and family. And, you know, this is a lot more than just fly tying. We we we're here for you guys hopefully you guys are there for everybody else that's in this group and it's really become an awesome community uh the last couple years have been even kind of growing for us we uh, not only just in people watching but in what we're putting out we're putting out kits for you guys that you can purchase and and follow along exactly what i'm tying out of uh, which has kind of been a big thing a big deal the last little bit and and we've made some upgrades this year even too we're uh we're doing what we're calling the quick ties now the quick ties are just a shortened version of what we're going to do tonight where you can just go back and if you just want to see the, the fly tied like from the start to st or sorry beginning to end really quickly um that's what we got there too so kind of uh it's growing and evolving and you guys are a huge part of what that is and the cool thing about those quick ties you just saw pop up on the screen there is uh we do want to know we're calling you guys the replay squad so those of you that do watch those we want to know you watch them so just you know drop a comment like and subscribe the video um, subscribe to our, our channel so that we know you're there uh, it helps us uh, helps us a lot and we also get to know that you guys are watching because sometimes you just don't know that's good and now you know and the rest you know. of the story so i don't know why it's called a merkin uh but they call it like del brown is probably the guy that has uh landed more permit on the fly than any other angler recorded and so this mm. is one of his patterns and because of that it is considered the most popular permit crab pattern wow. uh, but like okay. joel sather says there uh everything will eat it everything folks don't even think salt water because our friend chaz earlier chatting <laughs> said that yeah. he likes to catch something else on the crab and maybe he, he can fill us in on the comments so <laughs> that's kind of what we do here and obviously, Jim James William Crawford needs to know what thread all right, for all right. episode 20 so he can be ready for it. <laughs> all right. So for the first slide, guys, here on, the, on this uh, crab, I'm going to be using a UTC 140. You want something a little bit heftier. Um, I'm tying this, if it'll focus for you, with a chartreuse green. Um, this is kind of what the original pattern calls for is this big change in color on the underside of this crab. So, uh, But if you don't have green, maybe do something like a blue or, or a red is fine, too. But yeah green utc 140 is what i'm going to be using make it thick make it thick make it big because really tie this fly as big as you want uh mm -hmm. crab patterns are interesting and uh jim james william crawford was over this week after his trip to mexico and we talked about it he didn't get anything on the crab hmm. uh but they're they're di it's a if you're trout fisherman or freshwater the idea of what a crab does or how to fish it, which we learned in Oman. Yeah. And uh, it's unique. So Very unique, yeah. But that was the <coughs> fly in Oman. It was. There it, it was. is. Chaz says, Gold Eye love this fly. He, <laughs> he was telling us gold earlier. Gold Eye the crabs. And he loves to get the Gold Eye on the crabs. <laughs> uh, another really cool thing to tell you guys about is that we are bringing... The International Fly Fishing Film Festival mm -hmm. to Olds, Alberta, Canada. And I'm telling you guys, this is not just going to be typically in Alberta. Uh, it's it's at a theater. It's in the evening. People come. They go to the theater. They go home. Well, obviously, you're here. You're part of the TNL fam. And you know that we love community. So what we're trying to do is kind of bring that festival attitude, atmosphere 
uh, back to a film festival. Uh, if you've anybody throw your hands up, let me know if you've actually been to a film festival. Uh, it is a festival. It's not just like a show in. It's a festival. Uh, most of the times when the IF4 is played in Alberta, it's pretty cold out. So it's kind of hard <laughs> to yeah. do the festival thing. Fingers crossed on March 26th. In Olds, Alberta, Canada, at the Mayfair Cinema, which is a really retro, cool uh, theater. Um, we're going to play it at noon. Uh, we're going to try to have stuff going on that day. So we're kind of thinking like 10 to noon, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, which is just down the road from the theater, will be open. So come on down, support them. We're going to, again, this is a weather dependent thing as far as like the activities. Uh, but we'd like to set up some casting stuff. Um, oh, hey, Blake's back. <laughs> we oh. thought he went for good after we'd stole the, the bingo heart. on him. Yeah, good to see you, buddy. Uh, so 10 to 2, kind of, or 10 to noon, uh, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop uh, activities. Uh, noon to 2, just up the street, uh, is at the Mayfair Cinema. It's going to be the uh, film festival. Um, so the 2022, which I have the teaser reel I'm going to play here for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, come to that. And then at 2 till whenever... We're going to head down to Trax Pub um, and just kind of have an after party. And we're going to check about setting some stuff up in the parking lot at Trax Pub, given the weather dependency, and uh, make it, make this just a day out of it. So we get to hang out with people. You get to, you get to kind of have that uh, atmosphere that I think is lacking yeah, in totally. most of these films. So, yeah, with, uh, with that being <coughs> said, I want to show you guys the teaser reel for the films this year. Remember, March 26th, uh, on a Saturday, we got a plane in Olds here. I know it's going to go to Calgary um, on the 10th, like next week, I think. And then mm -hmm. it's going to be going in Edmonton in April. Uh, but if you want the, the festival atmosphere in a really cool retro theater and just hanging out with the TNL fam and the whole other uh, community that comes with it, make sure you get your tickets. They're online. And uh, Olds, Alberta the place to be so here's the teaser reel for the 2022 i have four uh, films Few good right. films in there. Super fun as always. Uh, yeah, so get your threads, get your bobbins ready, uh, your chartreuse neon green thread, and um, uh, unpack your stuff without blowing up your bags. <laughs> we're gonna tell you about bingo because we're gonna play some bingo. And last week's bingo winner didn't quite get the full <laughs> gamut. They got uh, not quite, just the sticker destroyed at the doors of doom. So the bingo cards are free. Uh, head over to our website, pick yourself up a bingo card. You don't need to do anything else to play bingo. It's free. It's totally free. Um, but there is a, actually there is a cost. It's heartbreak. Uh, we do play <laughs> a little game after bingo called Doors of yes, Doom. The Doors of Doom. And if Sucks. the folks who have been here before, uh, it's a little sadistic. It is sadistic. But anyways, every, someone said... Uh, Bingo's fun until Dana takes away the prizes. Yeah. It's what we need to understand is it's not uh, my choice, but your choices <laughs> that are choosing that. So, <laughs> Tim, why don't we show all. what we got here all right, uh, see what we got. for giveaways plus all the giveaways from last week, which are a lot. So, Tim's going to show all the right. new stuff. Show you some stuff here. So, we got. Uh, a hat here from Wolf Creek Angler. So Shout out to all the friends yeah. at Wolf Creek Anglers and all the people who picked up kits at Wolf Creek Anglers to tie along with us this week. Yeah, absolutely. We got a fish pond beer cozy. 
Whoa, that one. We've got, as always, our shore tying pack. You got $100 worth of material in there, various sorts and colors and shapes. We have this awesome box we've put together for you from uh, the TNL fam here. Some awesome flies in there. Got some, um, yeah, everything from nymphs to dries to big foam. Great little package there. And we got There's a lot of stuff here. Holy jeez. We have a loon, this guy here. So this is a applicator bottle. So if you want to put some oh, resins Bruce in that. Bruce Cole's a Trax pub. Oh, baby. All right, can't wait to see it, buddy. We got some stickers as well from Wolf Creek Anglers. And I just dropped whatever was in this. Give me a moment. Where did that go? What's that down there on the floor? <laughs> Jesus, too much stuff. I can't hold it all. All right. This is a temperature gauge, a fish pond temperature gauge. Awesome. That's the great point kit. of conversation. Yeah. Yes, it is. And we got some stuff, some more stuff from Wolf Creek Angler. So we got uh, this awesome t-shirt, Wolf Creek Angler, that guy there. And then a uh, nice button up shirt from High Drift Boats. There you go. Oh, yeah. That is the prizes for this week. Dana, why don't you show us yeah, what we had so from last what, week? Yeah, so what we had from last week. Oh, what's this? We also have, my camera doesn't, <laughs> Anyways, if I hold it by my face, it'll show you. It is another box of foam flies. A dozen foam flies. Stickers from Watermaster. Stickers from Fish Pond. Another hundred dollars of material from Shore Fishing. And this incredible dry bag from our friends at Watermaster which is the people who sponsor Flyingo. So anyways, you could win it and then you could lose it. Yeah. That's just that easy. You're going to have to wait around to see so how that goes down. That's a lot of stuff for giveaways <laughs> this week, guys. And we appreciate everybody <clears throat> who tunes in. Yep. Um, yeah. And that's the giveaways are free. Thankful to our sponsors, sponsors. Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Norvice, Watermaster, uh, IF4 slash fly, fly Fusion. And uh, shore Shores, fishing shore as well, yeah, 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 and some bonus giveaways in there from Wolf Creek Angler this week, which we're super thankful yeah. for. They've been a, you know, a group that we've gone and fished with, and they've come up and fished with us, and we hope that that relationship continues, and we'll give you kind of more information. Yeah. On that also, stuff, so. what I wanted to do was, uh, <clears throat> so Wolf Creek Anglers did a, uh, they had a giveaway, so they had a bunch of kits that people in their area. There in Wolf Creek, Montana, which is on the Missouri River. So anybody who came and got a kit from them got entered into the giveaway. The giveaway was an entire season four uh, of Thursday Night Live. So all 20 episodes, all 40 patterns, all packaged what we call a season kit. And so uh, today they did the draw. And so Jason of Wolf Creek Anglers uh drew the name and he told me that i could announce it here on thursday night live so awesome uh if this person's in the house raise your hand if you're not we'll find a way to get a hold of you so uh dante rodriguez also known as montana fly guy mt underscore fly underscore guy on instagram is the winner awesome. of the season four kit uh, hosted by our friends at wolf creek angler so uh, Dante, awesome. if you're in the house, let us know. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, Jason will figure out a way to get that to you. Obviously, some of the gifts today are from Wolf Creek Anglers, and we appreciate that. So, mm -hmm. without, what else do we need? Anything else? Uh, Bingo, I everybody got this. The... Got that. Skrulu. We <laughs> kicked <laughs> Chaz out. We fired you. We <laughs> brought Chaz back. <laughs> everybody hit tracks, pubs, <laughs> having fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I think that's uh, it. Anybody have a birthday? If you have a birthday, let us know. <laughs> let us know. We don't want to know at the end. We want to know right now. All right. All right. All right. All right. Switch your mics. Switch over mics. All right. Oops. Your other mic's not on. So what we'll do here is I'll just say this is the Merkin Permit Crab. Uh, maybe it looks a little complicated. It does but look a little complicated. Really not there. It looks, sounds like you're back. Am I back? You're Am back. I back in black? All right. All right. Show business. Show business. All right, guys. That is the Merkin Crab. Okay, now, don't worry if yours doesn't turn out looking exactly like that. 
Uh, it takes a little practice in these patterns, uh, but I do promise you the techniques we, we use are going to be fun because it's actually just a really repetitive process on how we tie this, excuse me, this fly. And it's really not an overcomplicated pattern. Um, just is one super easy pattern to kind of take forth and use at another time. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we are going to drop that out. Let's go ahead and get into your kits. Uh, we got this nice saltwater hook in there for you. Go ahead and get that placed in your vise. Somewhat level. And like I said before, I am using that UTC 140. I'm going to use that chartreuse colored thread. I'm going to start this just behind the eye. And the first thing we're going to do is we want to lay down a really nice thread base, basically right down to the hook bend. So we'll take this, just lay a thread base all the way into the bend, back up to the eye. And just, just back from the eye, we're going to leave our thread there. Okay, now in your kit also you have uh, what looks like dumbbell eyes and what it is is some bead chain eyes. This is a smaller fly so we don't need a ton of weight on the uh, on the bottom of this fly but what we're going to do is we're going to tie these in on top so that the way this fly is going to ride is actually hook up because what you don't want when you're fishing the salt water as we learned uh, is if this were to sit the other way all it's going to do is be caught in the rocks the entire time it's going to make life pretty miserable for you so that's why we orient this with some weight on top. I've got I've, I've someone sent me the uh, why this is called the merkin. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Is there something about a gherkin in it? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, sh we'll we'll maybe share it after. Okay. <laughs> but it's good. All right, sounds good. <laughs> I don't know what he's laughing about, but I'm sure we'll figure it out soon. So all I do here, guys, is I'm gonna take and lay the these eyes basically right on top of the hook, and I. And just like we've tied in lots of dumbbell eyes or other things, we're just gonna we're gonna level this off. We're gonna do some figure eights. I like to go side by side first, so I go like one direction. Once we kind of got it, so that it's pretty even. Um, then we just go one to the other to the other, and then we do some full figure eights around the whole thing. And then also what's important, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this here, but what I do is I actually go just around the eyes themselves, not around the hook shank, just the eyes. And that takes all those thread wraps that we had and just binds them together against each other, against the eyes. And then when we look at it, we wanna make sure that they're basically perfectly uh, perpendicular to that hook shank. And once we get that in, I'm gonna do a little bit more just to make sure you can never have too many wraps on this guy because these eyes actually aren't eyes for this pattern. They're not mimicking anything. They're just there for weight. So really lock them in. Always finish off with going around just the eyes themselves. Now that I'm here, I'm going to throw a quick half hitch in just because I want to save everything we just did. And now we're going to start working our thread back. So I'm going to leave my thread just, just beyond the point, about halfway between the point and the barb. Okay, this is where we're going to leave it. Uh, so we're going to start tying this pattern in, okay? So in your kit, uh, you had this mini looking flashaboo, okay? Just, it's actually really fine and hard to see. Um, I just stuck it. When I, when I struggle with materials, I always stick them in my, um, in my hackle pliers because then, then I know they're not going anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, and a little disclaimer here, guys. Most of the flies that we tie together, we always say you have enough material to tie this twice. This is not going to be one of those patterns, especially if it's your first time tying a crab because you're going to probably overuse um, the EP fiber that we've put in there. Um, so don't try to don't try to like thin this out and get two flies out of it. Try to tie one really good fly out of this one, okay? Just just trust me on this. Okay, so you got uh, this this long piece here. I've got three strands in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by cutting them right in the middle. Okay, and now that's gonna give me <clears throat> a total of six strands when I tie in just the one half. I'm gonna tie this in right on top of the hook shank. And then I'm going to double it over and tie the other half coming back down. So I'm going to grab this other half, bring it forward, pair them all up together. And then I'm just going to basically take this to that just behind the hook point and leave it there. Now I'm just going to leave those long for the time being because I'm going to come and trim them to length once I kind of get rocking and rolling. So then in your kits, you had <clears throat> a couple of, you should probably have a, a few of them actually, but these just these little feathers. Yeah, these feathers, we're going to make basically what appears to be a, a claw out of them. Okay, so I'm going to tie in one on the far side and the, and the near side. What I'm going to start off by doing is just a ways down the feather, I'll pull out some of that fluff. Just kind of get all that, that junk out of the way so it's not... Remember, <coughs> if you guys are tying with us, uh, we also have all the material on our website. Uh, but if you do something like break a thread or miss a step, we have what we call SOS. So type mm -hmm. in the comments SOS. Uh, it stops the show. 
and we take a break, wait for you to catch up. Claude's giving us an SOS already. All right. Too need, fast. Buddy? Too fast. Way too fast. Too fast. I barely started. Well, it. because it's too fast and everybody here is catching up, uh, what we're going to do is I want to show this because, and uh, this is for the Americans. Cause they don't know what these are. So let's let's check this out. We'll be right back. Get caught up. First but not least, roll and slam your lemon onto that cutting board and then begin to slice it into these nice half ovular chunk shapes. Same with the lime. Ooh. Then proceed to centrally rim your flat floored beverage container with some pickle juices before you dip it into this salty circle. Make sure you have a nice modicum of seasoning all over that rim. Pound some rocks in there. Okay, cardinal rule. Vodka always goes in first. If you even think about putting something in prior to vodka, a bolt of lightning will hit you. Then start dazzling this baby with Worcestershire sauce. Spank in some hot sauce and pepper in a brisk fashion and then place it from one cutting board onto another cutting board, obviously. Now, here comes the premier ingredient, Mott's Clamato. Oh baby, this drink would likely make Walter Chell feel like he had pugilistic dementia. Pickle, pepperoni, and then without further ado, jam the old meat rod in there. And remember those lemons and limes we carved up? They're on the rim now too. Ooh, I want to put my mouth on there. Do you want to put your mouth on there? <laughs> I do. Segway. <laughs> <laughs> Tim just okay. learned what a merkin uh, yeah. is. So just imagine that pubic hair was a really big deal. Okay? <laughs> like we're talking a little ways back when the full deal was the good thing. Um, yeah. And then you got crabs. <laughs> Literally. So, I mean, the there's a couple ways to get rid of crabs. One is you take a needle. How do you know this? <laughs> <laughs> and a lighter. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> and you just light that forest on fire, and when the crabs run out, you just poke them with a the needle. Do, That's the uh, tough way. Is this is this what you do on the ambulance? <laughs> yeah, you, you don't want to know. They call you for crabs? Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> so apparently, apparently a merkin is... wig. Now, a merkin wig is literally a pubic hair wig. It's a so patch of pubes. If you had to shave that because you had to get rid of it, and it was and the the style was... You needed it. I needed it. You so would you get it yourself a merkin. <laughs> you merkin. A merkin. So apparently this is. And eventually, this will look just like a merkin. <laughs> get on the Google machine and yeah. find out Google for yourself. yourself. Yeah. Google yourself. Google yourself. It already went sideways, Barry. Yeah. Oh, about man. seventy-five episodes ago. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get back to this. Let's get the merkin, merkin going. <laughs> let's get the merkin going. So we were just prepping up this feather. So this is going to be one of our basically imitating a claw. Okay, so um, you can tell that it actually bows out on one side. So if I point that at you right there, you can see it, it naturally goes this way. So that's the way I want it to go away from the fly. So when I take this and I turn and I set it back here, I want my claw to be pulling out and away. Now, before I tie this in, I want to grab just the very tip and pull everything down. So I expose kind of just the tip of the feather. Now I'm actually going to go in there and clip that out. And I'm going to show you why in a second, because this will actually make it appear to look like more of a crab claw. Because now, as you can see, it kind of looks like a claw. So we're going to tie that in as is, okay? But now when I come measure this, I want this to be roughly a hook shank in length from the very tip of the claw to the point of the hook or from the eye of the hook maximum okay so when i put this in here i don't want it sitting way way back there but once i think where i want it to go in is going to be i'll pull off all that extra um feather fiber that i don't need i'll lay it against i'm going to start with the far side of the fly i'll tie this in right there if i take a couple wraps first just kind of by themselves i can use the stem and and hold this and kind of maneuver it to where i want it to be so that's a little long so then I can just pull it back and you can see I just maintain that little bit of a claw there, okay? And then I'm gonna, once I have it where I want, I really gotta lock that down so it's not going anywhere. This isn't a fly you need to worry about putting too many thread wraps up the hook shank because we're gonna be, we're gonna be putting lots of stuff on there. So that's one. Let's grab another one and do the same thing. So I got another feather here. You can see it's got a natural curve. And now this one I'm just gonna match to size with the other one, but I'm gonna go in there and cut the tip out just like I did on the first one. 
And you'd be amazed how durable these feathers actually are because they're really not in the way of getting bitten or eaten um, in this process of when fishing them. So, so think about it. If you're going for a <clears throat> permit, you don't care if your fly comes back to be used no. again because there's a chance you're only <laughs> getting one. Yeah, if and the chance, one. like, possibility of catching a permit, that, that is a once-in-a-lifetime fish, so <laughs> you'll be okay with a wrecked fly. Now I'm going to take this one, I'm going to match it up on the other side, pull back all that stuff I don't need, make sure it's at the same length, pin it against the now the near side of the fly, get it pinned down, take a few thread wraps forward, and then I can use the stem and the feather to adjust it, and then I'm left with this, okay? kind of perfectly splayed out. Looks like a couple of crab claws or at least something kind of like it. Lock all that down. I'm going to I'm going <clears> to <throat> take my thread all the way kind of back up and just even out this under portion of the fly. Although it's not super crucial, we're just going to kind of even out cuz we have tied in the stem and it's a little bit bulkier at the rear end. I'll just kind of level out this a bit. And now I'm going to come up to a little bit behind the claws. I want to grab all that flash that I tied in there. Okay? I'm going to pull it straight out and I'm going to cut it off just beyond the tip of those claws. Okay. Now that's just giving a little bit of flash. So you got to imagine when you're, when you're stripping this, this is going to be in this fashion upside down. And as you strip it, not those claws are going to kind of wiggle as well as that flash is going to move in between the claws. And it's just kind of like a bit of a something. It's going to look like their antenna or something. It's just going to grab the attention of that fish and it will it's a subtle movement see a lot of times you don't strip a crab a lot you pull it once and let it pause and sit on the bottom and pull it once and let it pause and so you don't always have to have a lot sometimes the current's going to be just enough to move it um so yeah that's why we put that in there <clears throat> now the next part of this puzzle and i do say puzzle because this can be a little bit of a it is actually easy guys but it's just once you until you get used to it it's probably not going to feel that way emma <clears throat> Kisselika. Emma, I'm butchering it. We'll just call you Emma. From She's Northern tuning in Northern for the maiden Idaho. voyage from Northern Idaho. Welcome, nice. Emma. Welcome. We appreciate that you're here. Mm -hmm. Glad you joined in now and not five minutes ago. <laughs> Tim had yeah. to explain some things that... A bit delicate. A bit delicate. All right. So let's go over to our EP fiber. So in your kit, you're just going to have kind of a whole bunch of these strands that look like this. Okay. We're going to tie, tie those in as strands, but what I need you to do is you don't want to leave them in that long piece because we're going to need, we're going to need them. So, um, I'm going to cut a whole bunch of strips out of this pieces that are going to be roughly about that long. Okay. So kind of like a hook, sh a hook shank long, because we're going to turn them sideways and we're going to tie them all in. Okay. So I'm just going to take a second. You guys take a second and cut up basically all the pieces that you have in there. Let's cut those up. And basically what we're looking for is to land somewhere in the neighborhood of having uh, eight, we'll say eight clumps to work with. So if we have plenty, then we're gonna even maybe double them up and create a little bit more um, bulk. But what you need to do is go through and cut about, yeah, we'll say about eight of them, okay? And then we'll get tying them in. That's gonna be the next part of this fun little progression we're gonna do a lot of salt water enrico play what's his name and ep fibers oh uh, enrico Plassi or yeah i can never a lot that. of these this material is used in a lot of salt water flies tons of it yeah and it's a really unique material but it's it does a really good job of being able to be trimmed um and formed into is it, is it trimmed i said trimmed on american bourbon crab uh, i did <laughs> okay Enough, enough, enough. <laughs> how do you, you know? How do you get rid of crabs? You're you're telling us earlier. <laughs> All you need is a lighter I and a pen. I just want to know how. There's a good joke there, but I don't I don't want to. Enrique Puglisi. Puglisi. Okay, so you got some rubber legs. Just these white rubber legs. Um, what I want you to do is double it over. You should have just one long strand in there. We basically just need three pieces, so I'm gonna double it over, trim it. I'm gonna fold it over one more time. And then that'll give you four pieces, which is going to be one too many, but that's okay. We're going to have four equally spaced out pieces like that. And just set those aside because we are going to periodically tie those in um, as the legs that you saw in this pattern. Okay. So let's get started. If you guys are ready, let's get rocking into this first portion. Um, what I like to do be <clears throat> as I tie this in, I like to have a couple tools that they're ready. So if you, if you can and it's possible, 
grab yourself a gator clamp or something like this uh, like a hair clip thing like this might work um, I personally prefer the gator clamp because it's more solid and has a little bit tighter jaws but it's really advantageous to be able to fold all this material out of the way after each time you tie one in it just makes your life a lot easier okay so let's do the first one so I'm gonna tie this in virtually like it's a piece of dumbbell eyes okay just like it's a dumbbell eyes I'm gonna lay it in just like I tied these ones imagine that sideways here I'm gonna take a cross wrap Okay, so I cross wrapped once like that. Now I'm gonna come over the other way. I'm gonna put one wrap around the hook shank. So that's locked in the first wrap that I did. Pull that out of the way and go over the other side. So now I'm left with something that looks like this, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I can still move this. Not only can I pull it up and down the hook shank because it's not locked locked in yet, but I can also even it out so I have even amounts um, of fiber on either side. And then once I figure that it's pretty even, then I'm gonna start doing a few more cross wraps because I really wanna make sure this isn't gonna go anywhere. And even once you have more on there, you can still maneuver this quite well. And you don't want it to be like right back tight against those claws, but you do want it back near the base of the claws, okay? Ron, 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 Ron from New Hampshire just popped in. Welcome What's up, back, Ron? Ron. What's up? Hillbilly tuned in, he's just here now hey, too. Hey Andy. what's up guys? So once I've got that in there, I wanna make sure that it's perfectly flat across the top of the hook okay so it's perfectly flat have equal amounts on both sides if you don't you can easily I got a adjust picture that here pulled up for you just so you can <sighs> mimic yuck you can mimic no. the, the true yuck. american so now that i got one <coughs> there's yeah. a star american a heart american that's a lot of american a fu manchu american there's a it looks like a landing strip american uh <laughs> there's <laughs> I'm going to keep going on this. I'm going to get flat. <laughs> okay, guys. We're going to take one of those pieces of rubber legs now that we've got one tied in. We're going to start off with one set of legs. So I'm going to fold this over my thread. I'm going to show you a technique I really like to use. So I fold them so it's evenly on either There's side of my thread. There's a male Merkin wig. <laughs> Looks like a donut. has a hole in the middle. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so now that I have the bowls up here, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them and spread them so they're like this. And I grab with one finger on one side, one finger on the other. So if you, I'm gonna see if I can turn this so you can see that. I pull it like that. I pull it away from itself and back down the fly. As soon as I did that, obviously it came off my thread. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm tying it in and then as I pull it rearward, I'm putting some thread wraps back over top of it so that it basically is forcing it to go the direction I want it to. And then when I let go, they're headed back the way I want. So. The original pattern calls for what you probably want to do when you shape the merkin. Hmm. I'm going to challenge you here because I'm going to pull up a, a true merkin pattern. Oh, man. Let's see if you can do a star or something. Oh, you want me to shape this? Shape this. Oh, yeah. I want you to. Oh, geez. To really not, folks, it won't be what you guys do, but it'll be what <laughs> we do. It's not going to be what uh, I do either. All right, let's grab the next piece here, guys. We're going to do the same thing, okay? Let's come in. Rodrigo Andrade from Patagonia, Chile. Welcome. What is up? Sounds almost like our winner from Wolf Creek. That's a good point. Dante Rodriguez. Should have said you had to be here to win. Oh. Okay, so I got one on either direction. So this is why I like to come in here now with my gator clamp. Because I like to hold that out of the way so that when I go... <clears throat> start working on this stuff it's not at all in my way so gator clamps can be picked up in packages from places like princess auto for super cheap yeah and i use them all the time so then i just evened out this one guys got an evenly spaced where i want it to be i'm gonna pull it pull it rearward i'm gonna pull this clamp off because i'm gonna add that other one into it now i take some thread wraps back up against it justin <laughs> cole from the great white north of fort mcmurray welcome welcome and guys, we're just gonna keep repeating this process. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab it again. If you find that you have a clump that's like really not separating nice, I like to just take a comb and kind of fluff it up. Okay, so it fills out a lot nicer. So when I tie it in and I uh, eventually so, I go shape it. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> can't, you, can't even. Give me that look again. <laughs> just can't. Can't even. All right, tying this one in now, guys. So just keep repeating that process as we go. Remember I said like seven or eight pieces. We're gonna tie in another set of legs in the middle and then another set at the end. 
snug that back up against the other one so you can see it like that looks pretty snug pulled up against the back I'll pop off my gator clamp and I'll pull it rearward pick a couple more thread wraps so it's not going anywhere good so that's been one two we'll go one more before we add our next set of legs so I'm gonna fluff this guy up here again because it's a little bit dull in appearance doesn't take much just a couple of strokes with do you know what a comb. fluffer is a fluffer I'm sure you'll tell me Tim I can't give you all my secrets Yes, you can. <laughs> yes, you absolutely can. Well, now I brought it up, and I'm sure we're going to get some comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get this uh, fluff ball out of the way. Now I'm going to go and add in that piece that I just fluffed up. Add it in the middle, like so. Get my cross wrap on it. All right. I think it's time to change speeds on yeah. the music here. I'm yeah. just getting a little bit of, uh, you know. I was, I was getting a little uh, like I might have to start making fun of your music. No, that is not acceptable. Hello, it's, it's me. me. <laughs> I'm your fluffer. <laughs> I'm on the scene. Oh, but man. please, do you have a Merkin on? Okay. Next piece of rubber legs here, guys. So we've done... We did one set, put in a rubber leg. We did three, we put in a rubber leg. So that's one, two, three, four in. We're about halfway through. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I'm going to double this over again like I did last oh, time. Yeah. There you go. All right, folks, down at Tracks Pub, we're bringing out the beats. Bringing out the old sundry beats. Uh, yeah, well. Deny it. I dare you. Just waiting for Keith to deny it. <laughs> All right, tied that in there. Gonna put a few more thread wraps down. Like I said, you can never have enough in here. Now that's my second set of legs in there, like so. Starting to kind of build some shape here. Now I'm gonna pull that back and get the old hair clip in there. And I'm gonna go to my next piece. Needs a little fluff as well. So this should be number one, three, four, five. Or six, I can't remember. It's been too many now. We'll tie this one in. Hopefully you guys are staying with me if you need the SOS. Don't forget to use it. I'll lock that down, even it out, and pull it back. Once she's pulled back, and once you get good at this, guys, you actually fly through these patterns because it's so repetitive. Okay. We're going to add in our next one. <coughs> And remember, Just so everybody knows, Tim's got a ride home tonight. <laughs> that doesn't mean you have to do anything mean. Yeah, it's not mean. <laughs> we'll figure out something. All right, guys, we are in the home stretch here, almost there. Let's add in our next one. We'll do one more. So we're gonna do this one, then we'll add in our last rubber leg, and then we'll add in one more over top at the end, and that should be enough to call her good. I'll pull that straight. Get that evened out. I'm gonna put in one more across each way. Add one more for good measure. And I'm gonna pull it back up against the last one. Make sure it's good and even. Put some thread wraps. We're gonna add our last piece of rubber leg in here, the number three. <clears throat> and I'll pull all this back. Double this over our thread again. Tie that in there. Grab and splay them out on either side. We got 61 shares. Let's say 100 shares. And oh, Tim chugs a beer. It's too close. Too close. But I'll do it. If you share it, I'll do it. Because that's the kind of team player I am. Yeah. He'll All even, right. He'll even burn <laughs> your crabs off for you. <laughs> Give me a needle and a lighter. Okay. Last piece here. We're going to put in one more. Go ahead and grab this guy here. This is very like old tavern music. Yeah, well, you know, so I change it up. Yeah, when the club beats I had going before. K-pop to tavern. It wasn't K-pop. We've only done K-pop once. Well, I liked it. Okay, so I'm gonna keep talking right, about it until you start playing. I'll I'll bring up K-pop. <laughs> so sensitive about his music. All right, last one here, guys. Let's get this sucker evened out. 
and then basically we just got some trimming to do and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> the, the part you've oh, all been waiting for. Trim your merkin. All right, now that I've got all that in there, I'm just gonna take some thread wraps here. I'm gonna jump in front up to my eye, lay down a few more. I'm gonna whip finish this fly right here, guys. And then we're gonna get busy. Oh yeah, moto moto. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Moto. <laughs> Where's Chas when you need him, you know? <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah. Uh, this is totally the underlying tune of Moto Moto. I'm going to bring myself in for the final wraps oh, of this. Final wraps. So I can be a part of this and not okay. just a voice in the sky. All right, so before we do any trimming, we got to do some fluffing. So you want to fluff it out? Nobody in here has commented on the fluffer. Oh, nothing. Nothing. Fluff it all out, make sure it's good and full looking, like that. Oh, yeah. And then we're going to start doing some trimming. But first, what we got to do is what we got to we grab... Gotta do? What do we got to do, We got to grab these legs. What are we okay. going to do with these legs? We're going to pull them down. Treat them... Ah, never mind. Okay, let's pull these down. And I'm going to grab them with my gator clamp. So I want all six together. So a uh, bunch of people at Trax Pub, once they've tied the merkin, should they... Share it with somebody? Sure. Like give it to a friend tonight? I would. After the pub? Give it to them. See if they want to wear it around. <laughs> you never know. Oh, I lost a leg. Hey, don't lose legs. Got the beats. You do got the beats. So we want all these legs all the way, guys, just so that we can actually trim this appropriately. Should have had a K-pop night now. Next week, folks, is superhero night. Oh, uh, that's right. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. You, All right. I can't wait to see you in your costume. Now, just before I do anything, one of the most important things in my mind, so that none of this stuff moves. So if you see that underside there, on all, all those wraps, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here with my Solarez bone dry, and I'm just going to put a little dot all the way down the center so that all those wraps I just did and all those materials I put in are not going to have any chance of pulling out. I'm going to torch them real quick, just like that. Uh, now I know they're not going to go anywhere, so if I pull on them and trim them or whatever, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay, so let's start the trim. Now there's lots of trimming of options you could do, as Dana <laughs> let you us know. You can wax them. You can razor. You can sizz scissors is very traditional. Yep. What? <laughs> Scissor me timbers. <laughs> What's so funny? Drink a beer. Drink a beer. <laughs> Let's go. All right. All right. Nice light, Tim. Where'd you get that light? Mr. Blake Teague? Mr. Blake Teague. Okay. So this Blake, cut. Blake, if you were here, if you come up this summer, I'll give you a back rub. Oh, yeah. For the doors of doom. <laughs> Tim the fluffer. See, Greg knows. <laughs> ah, there you go. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, guys, is I want to start thinking of trying to attain a shape, right? So it doesn't really matter how tiny, tiny of crab you want to make this, but you want it to be semi-rounded. I'm going to cut mine bigger than this one, okay? But I thought you were I, doing a heart. <laughs> but I want it to be nice and tapered on both ends. So I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it all straight up, okay? Like, <laughs> Bag said we should be doing a commercial for manscaping. <laughs> yeah, we should. And I'm going to tip it down the other side. Being sure not to cut my claws, because that would be a real bummer. And Ron says, as a child, a sandwich we ate was called a fluffer nutter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I laugh all the time when I hear that now. Fluffer nutter. So I'll add to this the uh, EP fibers. Yeah. If left too long. So we got to think about something in salt water. There's different... Uh, different currents or different uh, depths that you're fishing these crabs. So if you're fishing in a bit more of current in the salt and they're a little deeper and those EP fibers are longer, okay, you see a permit tailing and you pin that fish and that crab takes a while to float down. You hear what I'm saying? It's not going to be effective. Okay, so they're... It's not going to get there in time. So There's one, something to think about. Once you've trimmed one side, you just want to go back and trim the other side so it matches the best that you can. So I trimmed the one side. I like the way it looked. And I'm still a little uneven. I'm a little longer on this top side. So I'm going to trim a little bit more. 
until I get it to where I want it to be. So I'm getting close though. What was, what was the item on top of the crab that we crushed it with? The item? Well, there was something hard on top. Oh yeah, they put like it was actually weight, and it was in like this. It was like molded, lead or molded something. Paste. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and that thing got down yeah. quick. But we were probably fishing like fifteen to twenty feet of water, and there was a lot of break there. Like it was, you it also had didn't to get down. Hit yourself with it, that's for sure. Blake can't wait to run in the bedroom and uh, tell his wife to check out his crabs. <laughs> nice. Check okay. out your merkin. I like it, guys. This this is good. I like the way that trim turned out. Nice and even, or fairly close to even. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these legs, and I'm going to try to get them to kind of seed back into that, um, into those fibers. And I'm going to go and grab, you grab red or orange or anything like that. I'm going to grab an, an orange Sharpie, and I'm just going to finish by making kind of the tips of these legs yellow or orange or red. Like a hot spot. Kind of like a hot hot-ish, spot, yeah. Hot-ish, it, hot. It could look like legs. Hot. Or maybe they think it's a claw, whatever. But it, you can see on the edge, end of legs of these guys, they're all kind of orange or red. And it all depends on the crab too. If it's a sand crab or if it's whatever kind. So I do that, and then all I'm going to do is trim these to length. So I don't want them to be stupid long, but I do want them to be long enough. So I'm not going to really overdo these ones. I like I like the legs to be a little bit longer this guy to cooperate a bit. Get this one in here. I trim them just a little bit. And length is just totally your preference, but I like it to be a little a little ways outside the body. And then I'm just going to come underneath because where I had all those legs pulled down, it kind of trapped some fibers. And this is the side that the fish is going to see, so let's make sure it's good and cleaned up get out all the, all the long pieces that might be hanging out still and there you have it guys there is your merkin hermit crab i hope you guys have the opportunity to use it sooner than i do because i'm sure it'll be a while before i get well here. no it's not true you'll be on the red deer river in no time yeah chucking fishing for, for gold eye here it is folks that yeah. is your crab oh, nice yeah. nice well done. That's good stuff. Gives the crab good color. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, Ooh, what was that? Oh, I bet I know. Well, folks, we got our friends at Trax Pub calling in. And what we're going to do is we're not going to turn on the sound. It's already episode 11. That's a fact. And that is That's this season <laughs> will be over before we know it. Uh, but let me see if I go over to here and I want to see if I can get Trax Pub just more so so we can see what they got going on. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe this works. Cool. All right. There it is, folks. We've got them muted because it's a like super duper double echo. But that's all the folks at Trax Pub. What's and up, I guys? do want to know. Oh, there it rowdy. is. There it is. What is up, fellas? There's Martin. Ladies. There's Cote. There's Calvin. There's some fine folks hanging out that don't even know <laughs> they're in uh, <laughs> Thursday Night Live. But anyways, folks, every time we try to do these tracks meet up, it storms and blizzards. So props to all the folks who... Battled yeah. the weather, Mr. Ah, Bruce. There's, there's Bruce. Bruce. Oh, there's Morgan. There's too. Morgan and What's her up? and her man. We can say that. We can embarrass them in front of everyone. <laughs> Maybe this is the kiss cam, Morgan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chaz, hold that. Uh, go back. Oh. Okay. Chaz, go back. There we go. Let's see the kiss cam. Oh, there. Yeah, make them super <laughs> uncomfortable. Yeah. The best. There it All is. All right. There you go. Oh, we're it. not getting. <laughs> that's not fair. <laughs> Chaz well, Chaz, it's your job. Go find somebody. Yeah. So that's our friends at Trax Pub. There they go. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. Round of applause. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Well, well Bruce, we're going to have to get a new boat with three seats because... Uh, add another. Add another. Can't see who else we got here, but what well, I need guys. you guys to do, Chaz, 
There's people behind Cody. Maybe they want to play bingo. Okay. Nobody says no to bingo. So make sure you guys pull out your bingo cards right now. Because we're going to pop into some bingo. Let's do it. All right, all right, all right. Thanks, buddy, for Trying showing us around. Is that Colin? Did Colin make it back? Is that Who's that right there? I'm trying to think of who that guy is. I don't know. That's Chaz, folks. We're going to head back and play some bingo. So feel free to jump out, grab your bingo cards. I'm going to head over here, play bingo, and start the game. Yeah, let's so do How it. do you play bingo? Well, you just play bingo. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, one of the oldest games that the uh, Romans played. Oh, yeah, did they? Back in 1472 oh, is when numbers. bingo was invented. You're pinky, picking numbers out of a hat like yeah. your numbers. <laughs> so we're going to run sequence number 12 today. Ooh. And uh, we have 200. And let me just refresh this. 228 bingo players in the game tonight. Wow. Okay. 200 in the same card as last week. Uh, I'm going to try my best to keep these cards for the rest of the year. So everybody at Tracks Pub, you guys pull out your bingo cards because... Uh, so Justin, if it doesn't reset, I don't know how to help. But <laughs> just, just you'll have a lookout and you'll be able to kind of keep track on a pen and paper like the Romans did back in 1472. <laughs> They used a stone and a, and a, a mortal and pester. <laughs> uh, click on the X and it will go away. All right. So tonight, just like it says here. Any line? Oh. Any line. Any line, folks. Down, over, over, up. Diagonal, up, over. You just need one line. There is a high, not same card from episode one. It will be from... The like last two? like five or six episodes since yeah. a after Christmas. So bingo's free and it's sponsored by our friends at, at Watermaster. So what is a Watermaster raft? Well, it's this thing we're sitting, we're sitting in right in. now. Oh, it is one of the, if not the best built raft on the market. And they're built in uh, Montana. They're not shipped from overseas. Not that all things overseas are bad. But these are hand built in Montana. And I know a lot of love and care goes into each and every water master that goes out. Yeah. And the conversation to have to yourself is a few things at the end of the day that you want to hold up. And that's your waders and your raft. Uh, I mean, if your rod breaks, that sucks. You just don't fish. But if your waders go down, you're soaking wet and it's a miserable day. Mm -hmm. And if your raft leaks or or hits a rock and blows up because it was a cheaper raft from uh, said <laughs> box store. Well, that's not fun either. So, all right. No. So did we get those bingo cards reset? Because we're going to start calling. There's a high probability that there's a tie tonight. The amount of players and the fact that we only went to one line. We do have a tiebreaker here. So if you get bingo, you say, uh, bingo and then enter your card ID number and enter the call That you hit bingo on mm -hmm. So we pop up the first four just to get it going because maybe somebody wins it right on the four Ooh, call that'd be crazy. We don't even know but if you're new and you just playing bingo for the first time we have something called the doors of doom Doors of doom. So uh, if you do win bingo you go back to Yes. Uh, you go get back. A, you get another game, and you got to choose a door. And behind one of those doors is nothing. <laughs> There's something That's behind all the doors. That's heartbreaking. They're Ryan Storch is in the house. What's up, Ryan? Rochambeau with the bingo. Okay, so we just wait. We call a few, and we wait. Why do we wait? Because the comments do come in at a bit of uh, Destin. You're late. Get oh, in. Get in. No. We just started bingo. Don't want to miss out. And you miss probably one of the best. 80, 64 minutes of Thursday Night Live yet. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame. You should be ashamed. Also, for the next three episodes, we've put kits at uh, Bow River Brewing. Mm, that is true. So, Destin, I know you were asking about a kit. You head down to Bow River Brewing. The kits are free. All we ask is maybe buy a six-pack. If you don't drink, just take a kit and run. So we dropped off a bunch of kits down there so you guys can go for the next three episodes and 
get your kids. But if you're just here tonight, oh, I can't wait for someone to win. <laughs> Come on. Rough, Rough water, water caddis. caddis. Have we tied that one yet? No, we did, didn't no, we? No, it's the final episode. I think. Oh, it is. Nope. It's in there. I thought we it's did episode it. Episode 17. No, 18. Ooh, hey, episode wait. 18, K Bingo. We got Bingo? No, we don't got Bingo. Thursday Night Live fly tying is call number six. Any right. line, folks, any line works for us tonight. Any line. Yeah. We got to get down to Tracks Pub. <laughs> any line <laughs> works. All right, waiting for the comments to come in. Man, sometimes it goes so fast. I know, all of a sudden populate. It. One to go. Cam, yeah. I hope you win and get crushed. <laughs> <laughs> That's love. Hackle That's love, Beetle folks. is call number seven. Well, Ryan, Beetle. the odds tonight are not in your no, favor. They are not. Oh, Mr. Ooh, Joel Souther, he wins. That guy's a winner. Oh, Bingo. we got it. Bingo. Fly Fisher 54. Give us the number at the top Bingo. of your card. Let us know. Bingo. We'll double check it. Bingo. Bingo. The bingo. Oh. <laughs> I suck at this game. Uh, Fly Fisher 54 got another bingo. Maybe it's two lines. All right, <laughs> let us know. Uh, the way it works is you say bingo, your number, and the call at which you got it on. You're killing me, Smalls. <laughs> Try our best, Roger. Uh, 197. Bingo card. Oh, we got a bingo for Tom Pape, too. Okay, so Let's this see. one here is... Uh, well, okay, so that's 197. And now let's do let's uh, check. 041, 041, Mr. Pape. Mr. Pape. Okay, oh, so too. Hackle yeah. Beetle was both. Hackle Beetle was both. Yeah, okay. Call six. So wait, Flyfisher54 got it on call six. So he was one before one Mr. So Pape. got it on Thursday Night Live. Yeah, he was, because call seven is right there, and that is call number six, Thursday Night Live. So that's a good yeah. point. So that's that means that uh, Flyfisher54 was called before Mr. Pape. Oh, let the fun continue. All, All right, right, folks. So what we got to do is we got to come over here and entertain you for three seconds. Who, who is the Fly Fisher 54? I don't know. Come on, I let us know your name. This is someone personal. Are. This is, but what's if we're not? Gonna if we're going to crush your hopes and dreams, we need to know your name. All right, let us know. <laughs> let us know who you are. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. I'm not. I, well, folks, every <laughs> week we do something weird here on yep. the uh, Thursday Night Live Fly Time. And that starts with this. The randomized event. Uh, I, I'm just as kind as you are. Yep. The randomized event of the doors. <sighs> and everybody wants to tell him <laughs> <laughs> which door to pick. But it's not their door to pick. Not their door. So Fly Fisher 54. Oh, man. The Fly Fisher 54. You've got one try. We hold tight. Let we us hold know. our breath. We hold our breath. Quick disclaimer is that oh. I have nothing to do with this idea. So That's don't hate okay. me. <laughs> he fluffs <laughs> and puts on. Uh. All right, I'm waiting. We got, we got door five. Scott Bergie, you're playing a game that doesn't exist. All right, All right, buddy. Here well, <laughs> if it, if All it, right. The suspense. If it's episode 12, number three. Um, well, folks, he's picked door number three. Let's see. There's Is so the heartbreak going to continue? many items to give away. I bet you probably $500 in oh, gifts. Man. If he doesn't get the right door or the door to win, this, these prizes go into the pile next week. Carry over. Kay. Carry over. All right. All right. You ready? So let's check the doors he didn't pick. Let's do it. Start with door number, number two. one. Oh, you would. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh. That is the fact. Oh. Well, folks, there's still two doors left. And let's check out the other door that he didn't pick. Oh, he has hope to Very win. Little. Maybe Very little. something. Something. What is door number three? What is door number three? Tell us. Oh, he got himself a handful of stickers. Oh. That's better well, than nothing. It's better than nothing. That is well, Flatfisher 54, that is how the you cookie chose crumbles. The wrong yeah, door. You did. You listened to the peers. You shouldn't have listened to them. Yeah, so they hopefully you realize that that is the same pattern as last week. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Are we noticing a trend here, folks? There may be one or two weeks here. of similarities. Let's head back to the K-pop. Oh, Get man. this party started. So mean. Oh. So mean. You know. You know what? Let's have a moment of silence <laughs> for the Fly Fisher Fifty Four. Okay, let's do it. <sighs> okay, moving on. Well, that's that a fact. Good. That's yep, it. That we don't care about okay. you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your stickers. Put yeah, them on your stickers your, and put, put them, them on your uh, put them on door number three. Put them on your uh, yeah. When you get home, I hope you put a big black jiffy marker on your door to your house and say one. Should have picked door <laughs> one. Should have picked number one. <laughs> I should have done it. Another week of bitter <laughs> dis- <laughs> <laughs> support uh. group. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Blake. I agree. <laughs> oh, best comment. Oh, oh man. Oh, it is true. Some stickers for the new drift boat. Oh. That is fantastic. <laughs> well, folks, that's how it goes on Thursday Night Live. <sighs> Fly time and Watermaster wraps. Flying go. Flying go. Flying go. Flying go. All tracks, pub. We're coming for you. But before we do that. We got another flat to tie. What are we going to tie? I'm we gonna fix the camera, are so going to tie over to you. the devil bug. So what thread are we going to use tonight? Um, thread is really quite irrelevant on this fly. Um, what you're going to notice is, well, you might not notice it, because when we tied for you, we have a camera that zooms super tight on it. Uh, but what you can't tell is it's a super tiny hook. It's like a size 16. So it is not, um, when tying a pattern like this, it's not super easy. So be patient with yourselves. Um, and we're going to do our best to, to kind of take you through it. There's a couple different ways to tie this. So I'm going to kind of teach you the, the, the quick and dirty version of it so that it's... Uh, yeah, it's really, uh, it's one of those that's easy to, to get in on. Um, I'm going to do one more change on my vise here because I need to use a, uh, a different Jaws and that may totally screw up what Dana just did. So let's that's take a good peek. point. Well, let's say thanks to our sponsors and we'll be right back. Don't you think you deserve a pair of scissors that can make the cut? Oh, A little teaser where you can see on March 26th. Oh. Come down to Old Alberta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, baby. All right, let's Setting get back tunes. to tying some flies, folks. Alrighty. Okay, let's get at it. What you got to see here in the vise is the devil bug. So this is a very interesting pattern. It doesn't really represent anything, but represents a little bit of everything. It can be fished stripped, it can be fished in the dead drift, it can be uh, um, fished as like a, a caddis that's moving across the surface of the water. Just erratically, lots of different things you can do with this pattern. It can be tied in lots of different colors. This kind of seems to be the general go-to when you do any research on the devil bug. 
it seems to be that this is the one, this is the color scheme that's um, most chosen. Uh, probably just because it's like a hot spot. Looks like it's got a bug of some kind, whether it's a caddis coming out of his casing, whatever it is. Um, it's, a, it's a good pattern. So let's get at it. Let's see it tying this fly. And I'm going to take you through this one. So we're going to tie you the kind of, there's a couple different ways to tie this fly, but I'm going to kind of take you through what I would consider or call the, ooh, just drop my, oh, the dirty, quick and dirty version, um, where you can definitely bang out a whole ton of these and fill up your box. And it's, it's always good, guys, like we say, you tie one, tie 12. Make sure you have a, a good number of them um, in your box of varying colors. And the more you tie, the quicker you're going to get at them. Um, that's just a fact. That when I come to you guys and you see me tie a fly, it's not the first time I've tied this pattern. I've tied easily a dozen already, and that's how you get really good, and your flow is good, and you just know your proportions and everything like that. So just a quick comment about the IF4 because... So, Justin, you can also purchase the, uh, the, the virtual event. So if you go on... Uh, I can't remember the link, but... So we're hosting what they call the live event. We're also hosting a virtual event, so I don't know at which geographical region that is, but you can download or have access to it for like 48 hours. Uh, I believe the same price as going to the theater. Uh, so yeah, check out that on our Facebook page is the links for those. Um, so I haven't tried, I don't, I don't remember what the geographical IP address restrictions are, uh, but definitely, if you guys aren't from here and you want to download it or watch the virtual, try that. <coughs> but what I also encourage is other folks in the States is check out flyfilmfest.com because it's probably coming somewhere near you. And I encourage you, if you can, uh, unlike Justin, who's about eight hours north of us, <laughs> and it's not going to be played up there, is go find somewhere close by that you can watch it. Um, because it's a lot of work and it costs a lot of money to put it on. So it's, it really helps to go support people around you. And then you get to meet some really cool people like Tim. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's very kind of you to say. That's, that's about it for the night. <laughs> that's, that's all you get. Okay, guys, as far as the thread's concerned, I'm going to be using UTC 70, something similar would be like a six or eight dot, um, and a uni thread. I'm using just some very simple, uh, all of color. I'm not getting crazy here. I'm going to start my thread behind the eye. Start working it back down to the bend. Okay, I'm going to leave it's this. It's all ages, too. All ages. All oh, ages. Yeah, all ages. Come on down, there. Mike. Bring the kids. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to leave that, my thread, basically between the hook point and the barb. Okay. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go in and grab the deer hair. This is a very simple pattern. There's literally only two materials in here. you got deer hair and dubbing. That's it. So you got your patch of deer hair that came in your kit. So let's go ahead, let's grab um, a decent chunk off of that. I would say probably like start with half a pencil width and that gives you a good like starting point and we probably will actually use less than that. But what you always wanna do is you wanna come in, clean out the, the butts we'll call them and as you can see there, you can see that little, that fluffy stuff that comes out. That's just oh, the under butt, for- Oh, the butt fluff. Butt fluff, it's like CBC. Also known as Dagos. Dagos. Wherever you go, Dago. Dago. <laughs> well played. Well played. So once we get that, all that fluff off of there, we're going to take it, put it in our hair stacker. Okay, we're going to give that a couple wraps on the table. Now we're going to take the butt or the base of it and point it back down the fly because we want, when we pull this off, we want those stack tips to be pointing right out the back. Okay, now I may have to restack this once I get the perfect amount, but what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to double check and see. So uh, I like to kind of check my tail and just see if it appears to be too much, which that is obviously way too much hair for this fly. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to take a pinch of some of it off till I think I've got what I want. So I'm just pulling and separating what I think I want off. It doesn't have to be this huge clump. So I think, okay, that looks good to me. I'll go ahead, pull that stuff out. If I did it properly, I shouldn't even have to restack it, which I don't need to. You get really good at transferring that from hand to hand. Now I'm gonna tie this in a full hook shank and length behind. So I'm just gonna brace off the eye of the hook, translate that back, switch hands, place that where I left my thread. I'm gonna cord up my thread a little bit here. That just means giving it a good spin so it cords up. Now it's important that when I take um, these first couple wraps here that I don't put too much pressure 
Otherwise, I'm just going to flare this so it flares so tall or so big that um, it's just that not going to... That is not a tail. It's, yeah, it's it doesn't look like, like a, a tail. spider leg. Like a spider leg. So spider legs. That's already flared a little bit more than I'd like it to, but if you don't, <laughs> so, <laughs> you got to put a little bit of pressure. You know what spider legs are referenced to? Spider legs? <sighs> Damn. Dude, bro, I I'm over here focused trying to tie a fly. <laughs> Tim, you're the one who knew how to get rid of... Cubic crabs. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. Tell me what spider legs are. I'll leave it for the comments. All I'm right. sure Cam will tune in. <laughs> so all I did, guys, is I pulled, uh, pulled back that, um, that hair. Okay. So I want to keep it right up on top of the fly. And by pulling it back like that, I'm able to basically um, expose where I'm going to put in my my dubbing. So now that I did that, I'm going to come in and grab my red dubbing here. And we not, we're not going to be stingy about the dubbing here at all, okay? So I want to make a nice, like, probably four, three and a half to four inch long dubbing noodle, okay? I want to make sure I have lots of red dubbing. I'm going to probably stack it on top of itself a little bit even. Um, you got to admit, Tim, my beats are on par. That's they, one thing I love about Chaz. Even when he was sitting there, he loved them. I know, he did. And they are, they're good today. They're better now. Okay, okay good. Yeah. Now that you got the K-pop rolling. Okay, coming down, I'm gonna take one more picture. This is B-pop. Sorry, I, I can't keep track of all this cool kid stuff. From Black Falls pop. Black Falls pop. Okay, I'm gonna pull that hair up and I'm gonna start taking some wraps right at the back of the fly, okay? We're gonna start laying down a nice little ample, we'll call it, try to keep that body up fairly even as you move forward. You want a nice, even underbody all the way up. Leave a little bit of space behind the eye. So I'm gonna pull that off there. Take a couple of thread wraps like that. And then I'm gonna bring all this hair, making sure it stays right up on top, because that's where I need it to be. Get off all the other little stuff that's not where it should be. I'm gonna pull all this forward and kind of controlling it with my other hand here so that I make sure all of the hair stays right up on top and just down over the sides of this hook, the hook shank, okay? Now that I got it to right there, I'm gonna take a little bit of a clockwise twist for myself, because I'm left-handed, opposite if you're if you're right-handed. Take this, and now this time we do wanna flare that, okay? So I'm pulling hard, but I'm also bracing with these two fingers right here, making sure that that hair stays right up on top like that. See how we get that nice hump shape? And now that I've got that, in there nice and good. I'm gonna take a few thread wraps in front, almost creating a bit of a dam so that I force those up. Because when I trim these, I want them to basically point at a 45 degree angle up. I'm gonna come in here and trim that little bit of dubbing. That's Ooh, this is your best one yet. Ah. <laughs> a lot better than the quick tie. The quick tie was not good. We tried some uh, <laughs> different hair. So uh -huh. you guys just go ahead and watch that and make fun of me. Technique's the same. The product just doesn't look as good. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna cut it like a 45 degree angle, leaving that little head like so. Hey, is there River Fest at Bover Brew or at uh, Tracks Pub? I heard there was. Let me know, folks. Did you get the River Fest at Tracks Pub tonight? Awesome if there is. Okay, and now that Look I'm at, at this that. point, this is so good, Tim. So You're good. good. Oh, Tim, if I was a, if I was single, oh. yeah. I would, I would, uh, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take uh, uh, my, my, half, for... <laughs> my half hitch tool. I'm just going <laughs> I around see, the I toys. Got you, flustered. you do. Like, you got me flustered. Yeah. You're like, man, if just we were single. If just, if only. Just oh. like that, guys. I'm yarn, gonna take. Yarn for the body, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It doesn't really matter what you use. Um, the, the fact that there's so much hair on this makes it super floatable. Um, yeah, and there's just tons of hair. It's gonna keep it keep it up on the top. I'd if like to see more beverages into your throat. No, would you? Why? Do you know what I named beverage? That thing in your hand. Well, because Tim, tonight you got a ride home. Ah, uh, I see. Well, the devil's bug has been tied. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. There you have that it, guys. Is... That is the devil bug. Um, I I honestly like. If I could give you a little uh, a little secret, I would say put this in your box and take it to your mountain streams. What? Or It's like a humpy and uh, 
Yes. Go on. It's just great. Like the the best part is this technique is simple. Basically, two materials, and uh, put it in Flyagra, or put some Loxa on it. Yep. That thing. It's that thing fish. is going to convince fish. a lot of fish to eat it. They call it the devil's bug. Why? We don't, don't know. know. We don't know. We Maybe don't know. it's red. Just a guess. The devil's red. <laughs> the devil's in the details. That's why, Tim, because oh. this bug is detailed to the max. Detailed. 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 If you cut it. Cam probably broke a thread, so... It is detailed. Not probably. Everyone loves a good humpy, especially on tonight when we tied the Merkin permit crab. Uh-huh. And now I know. That's what I'll say is you now I know. If we tied it on hump day. On, well, then we'd have to we'd go be, Wednesday night live. Nobody hump. wants Wednesday night live because that's Trax wing night, which uh, we crushed a lot of wings at Trax last night. Did you? Oh, no invite, nothing. Uh, you're working. It doesn't mean I don't want an invitation. You're the working one in the relationship, <laughs> I Tim. Do, I do know this. <laughs> this is true. Yes, you are. Uh, so, What I kind of right. want to go over is something not there, but here, uh, showing you guys how to get your tickets for IF4. Okay, so, and for other people who, IF4 has a special place in our heart. Um, I've had two films in IF4, and fell short this year in the the stimmies but um we look to be back we look to be back soon, soon so soon. there's only two pretty much fly fishing specific film fest there's the fly fishing film tour uh and the i have four so uh also you sh my camera won't show that's the new issue of fly fusion so if you haven't uh, got the magazine which you can just tell the quality right there and uh, full of really cool articles lots of fly tying stuff in there make sure you guys head over and uh, pick that up grab yourself a subscription we'll be giving some of those away too but back to the IF4 the film fest here uh, so two years ago we had our show our film nine foot rod in IF4 and uh, we will be showing that the Thursday before the 26th uh, during Thursday Night Live. So we'll show our film, Nine Foot Rod. So if you haven't seen it before, uh, make sure you tune in on that Thursday. But so go to flyfilmfest.com and just click on buy tickets. Can't see my cursor. Uh, but anyways, I just clicked on buy tickets. Now here's the map. So wherever you guys are watching us from, you can basically just zoom in yeah. and find your zone, find your place. So we're kind of Detroit. Scott's from, he's probably in bed. Auburn Hills has a show in, which is probably Schultz's out, Schultz, Schultz Outfitter. Uh, there's a place there. There's a place there. There's lots of places here. Lots of places that the I-4 goes. So we're going to scroll back up on the map and we're going to check out Alberta. We're going to go past there. We're going to fly right in here to Olds, Alberta, Canada. Boom. Okay, so this is where we are. So those pins aren't anywhere specific. But if you click on them, this one here tells you it's at Mayfair Cinema. And this is the show ticket. So go on there, buy your tickets. They're $15 or $20 at the door. But if you click on this other green one, uh, if you click on there... Um, now you can watch this event live so you can you can purchase the virtual screening from Olds Alberta uh, it doesn't say anything about the geographical restrictions but basically if you do get this you have uh, seven days to, to watch it once you've started so nice. uh, that's how the virtual screening works you go through there you find that let's go back to the schedule here I want to show you guys something what's really cool here in uh, the map that I got pulled up here is is the theater is right there, okay? Uh, theater is right there. Where did it go? Mayfair Cinema. You can't see my 
can't see my cursor, but if you go over to the left a bit and you see a uh, paint pot, oh, there, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop. They showed right up, right there. Perfect. Look, guys, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop's right there. The theater is right up the street. And if we just go over here, look, there's Trax Pub. Oh, it's like it's all perfect. Look at that. Planned. Look at that. And this is a big parking lot here. We can do a bunch of fun stuff like that. That's perfect. So, Look at that. This is kind of what we're doing with this community event, folks. We're going IF4, and we're trying to bring the festival back to Film Fest. And uh, that's that. That's awesome. That's kind of that. Oh, yeah. It's uh, really awesome to actually do that here. It's super local. Get to do it right in our own town. It's awesome. Yeah, it that. is. In a smaller town, which I really like because everybody can get behind it. When it's in the big city, it's... It's cool. A lot of people go to it. It's just impersonal uh, a bit, though. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think what the Film Fest uh, idea was, was having these these festivals and bringing a group of fly fishing people together. So uh, let's do that. Let's pack the Mayfair Cinema. They've actually never done something like this before, other than host the movies they do. Um, so, yeah, let's just uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Looks like some people are going to be there, which is awesome. Nicole, Struthers, awesome. Colleen. Colleen, yeah, that's Jacob, wicked. Brent, Ryan. Yeah. Small town, I have four. It is the roots of film festivals. That's pretty cool. So yeah. 8.30, Tim. Gosh. Time Whenever flies. we have tracks, meetups. I know. It's we crazy. do crazy things like <laughs> go quick. Yeah, so remember, right? uh, for announcement side of things, Bover Brewing has kits head down to Bover Brewing if you haven't purchased uh, one of the season kits and that way you can go get sample packs so you can get the episode for next week and Destin head down um, get your kit from Bover Brewing and grab some and we, we do still have a few of these so yeah we do so interested. and so the good thing about these kits is it's not too late because all the quick ties are there so basically, you're getting a subscription fly box. You can go back and tie all 40 patterns. You can buy one on the, you can buy one next year, and all the content is there for you to pull out your kit and tie along, in a quick tie fashion. All the live streams are still on YouTube, so if you want to go in and catch the shows, and all the fun stuff like that, you can still. Mm -hmm. So it does not arrive in Chile. Can it be seen online? Well, go, you know, to what I showed you there before, and. Uh, you know, click on the virtual event. See if you yeah. can support us by uh, getting your tickets yeah. there. I don't I don't know it. too much how that works, but uh, Rodrigo, check it out. Let us know, and you can be there in spirit. So what Jake was saying there, he's talking about, oh, maybe I'll get a hotel when I'm up there. What is the Pomeroy kind of the best place to get here, or what's the... Yeah, so for hotels, uh, there's the Radisson or Ramada, which is right there. Uh, but the Pomeroy is right when you come into town. That's right there. Across the street is Best Western. Right, yeah, there's um, Best Western. Hold tight on booking a hotel. I'm going to talk to them and see if they'll uh, jump in and help us yeah, with do a bit of a price because that's cool too. So there it is, folks. Olds, Alberta, Canada on March 26. Let's make a day out of it. Let's have fun together watching some really cool fly fishing films because April 1st around here in the ES2, the water's open, so we can mm -hmm. all get excited I together. Oh, and uh, Yeah, so thanks to Rocky Mountain Fly Shop for helping us put this on and working together again to bring you guys an awesome event. And Ken, yes, I don't see why we couldn't send that to you in Australia if yeah, you Ken, chose to purchase a kit. If you go to our website, which I'll show you right here, Wow, look at that. Oh, right there. Uh, flyfishingbover.com <laughs> slash TNLS4. Uh, at the top here, you just go season four kits by now, and then uh, we'll ship them. Also, uh, if it's not in your budget to buy uh, all 40 patterns like this, you guys can remember, you go on here and get all the materials. The list is all here. If you click on these, they bring up the quick ties. Uh, so remember, there's Tim talking us through how to tie this fly that was used in episode one. So everything's there. Uh, that's your resource. We're trying to make sure everybody can be involved, whether you get a kit or you don't get a kit. We just want people to come and hang out with us 
And as always, we thank our sponsors for all yeah. the awesome gifts and giveaways. And without them, we couldn't be here Not a chance, uh, doing no. the show with That's you guys. Bad. And on that good note, we want to bring you guys our favorite part of the show. So, Ken, if you're new, this is what you came for. What are your wins? Tracks Pub, you guys feel free to share them with each other. Feel free, if you have your phones open, to share them with us. And, uh, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff here at Thursday Night Live Flight Time. Uh, we just get a little more sentimental. We get a little more positive. And we try to leave you guys each and every week um, feeling good. Like we said, we want to make you a better fly tire, a better fly fisherman, and uh, ultimately a better person when you leave here. And we've said it before in many, many weeks past. It's, uh, what, well, first off, what is your win? Like, what is a win? Well, the win doesn't have to be anything of any size because everything is a win. Uh, you waking up this morning with breath in your lungs is a win. Um, but it's just a way of sharing and encouraging others with um, whether it's your story, whether it's your, hey, this to happen to me this week was super positive, or even sometimes it's the negatives, but what we learn out of it that's a positive. Um, really, anything you want to say in here is just it's a win so share it with each other drop it in the comments we're going to read through them here in a minute uh dean and i will kind of share a win from our week big or small and um yeah that's what our wins are yeah so feel free to share them in the comments like tim said i will put them up here we got claude's got colleen ty with him and i think they're coming to if4 we met them at tracks before at the christmas party Mm -hmm. uh brent's got to head out and go for a walk with the pooch <laughs> so brent pooch walks peace out brother uh tim why don't you go first yeah sure so uh well, let me see here probably uh win from this last week well i got to go out with a bunch of buddies after last week's show um i went out ice fishing which dana doesn't all really love although i think he would if he'd give it the chance the way we do it he would enjoy it um, but yeah, we, I had a really stress-free, you know, my wife is amazing. She just said, Hey, just go. You've been looking forward to this. I did end up taking the, the young pup, which was a little bit of an adventure, but it was basically just three days of sleeping on the ice, sitting around uh, a stove, wood stove, drinking some beer, telling stories, catching some fish, a l- little bit of mixed adventure in at the end, trying to get off the ice over some pressure cracks and getting towed up a hill and all sorts of fun things. But it's just part of the adventure. Um, and Dana tells this to me all the time. Like I love, um, I do all these things with my daughter all the time. And I love that. I love her. But every once in a while, when you do get a little bit of that, I guess for lack of better adult terms, time. adult time yeah. where it's just very low stress, there's nothing to really worry about except yourself. Um, it was refreshed. I came back refreshed. I feel great this week. And it was just like a, a little reset for me so i'm very thankful for that it was a huge win for me in my in my week yeah that's super cool <coughs> um so my win obviously i'm gonna do something extra with a video <laughs> <laughs> uh, i think the video should play over top of us and we shouldn't lose you guys uh but yeah so we did it again Oops, we <laughs> went on another Oops. climb, me and my broski, my mountain brother, Aaron. Uh, I truly can't, without getting too long-winded about this, but uh, depression or mental darkness is a real thing. And uh, I've been I've been lacking some, some enjoyments in the winter. And it's, it's not to say that Thursday Night Live wasn't great for me but I needed more I needed challenges and uh, yeah so Aaron kind of took me under his wing and was like hey man why don't you come try to climb some mountains so as I've talked about in the past uh, we've done quite a few we're trying to get out weekly but this week we went somewhere and it was uh, obviously I talk about all these lessons that keep happening on the mountain and I do want to talk about one because I do want to leave you guys with a little bit of a lesson uh, but this video should play. Hopefully, we're still here when it plays. Uh, yeah. You'll probably hear us. That's something. That is me and Mountain Brother Aaron at the top of Lady McDonald, 2,660 meters. And, uh, ha, super That's cool. That's so awesome. 
Uh, anyways, we do have a flag that says love people climb mountains. You guys have seen the love people catch fish. Uh, but that, there we were standing at the top of the world or so we felt. And that was pretty cool. That's super special. Uh, the lesson was this. Okay. So there's kind of, uh, there's a place on that mountain called like the tea house or they call it the helicopter pad. <coughs> and it's just out of the tree lines. It's, it's tough to like, it's not easy to get there, but it's common. And a lot of people get there. And so, uh, you know, we went early, but so as we went, people went earlier and it's commonplace for people to kind of go exercise and whatever. A lot of people on the way down that were passing us, we would ask them the question, did you get to the summit? Um, and they said, oh, we got to the helicopter pad, which is probably about 300, 400 meters from the top. The hardest, they didn't do the hardest part, which is to get up, up the scrambling part. <coughs> and so some people, all the people kept coming down and we said, did you get to the summit? And they said, no, it's really bad up there. The wind, the snow. We got to the helicopter pad and it's beautiful. So I was finding that the more people that came down the mountain and told us where they got to, I started to accept in my mind that if we get to the helicopter pad, it's, it's cool because we're doing what everybody else is doing and that's yeah. fine. And nobody's going past there. Uh, so that's acceptable. And so we got to the helicopter pad and I said to Aaron, and then you look and you see the actual the climb and I'm like, there's no way <laughs> in hell that, that is the that's where we gotta go. And so we looked at our maps and that's where we gotta go. And we both kind of chatted with each other and said, It's pretty you know, it's pretty good right here. This is this view's great and it's windy and it's snowing and that's and everybody else turned around here and that's okay. So we don't feel like we're less than everybody. We feel like we're just like everybody else. So we kind of hummed and hawed and then we decided, uh, well, actually what we did is we saw this dude, this little human crawling like right near the top. And I was like, wow, like someone's doing it, right? We can do it. And so it just gave me this whole newfound hope that someone's doing it. And the reason I share the story is because we, we went and we did it and we only did it is because we saw one person of probably 30 to 40 people that we passed that did it. He didn't tell us he did it. We saw him do it. And so the magic of this in the story of wins is that uh, when we share our wins, we inspire other people. When we, sh when we spread our light, we allow other people to spread their light. And it was just super cool moment where we saw one guy doing it, not talking about doing it, but actually, actually doing, doing it. it. Yeah. And I was like, let's go. And we did it. And it wasn't, and it was hard, but it wasn't um, impossible by any means. But we would have been content turning around had we not just seen that one person, like little dude at the top. And I was like, what is he doing? <laughs> what is he doing? I can do that. And, and when we passed him, because we were going up and then he was coming down, and I just said, thanks for going to the top because without you doing that, I wouldn't have gone. And they stared at me like I was an idiot. But anyways, that's my point. That's my message to leave to you guys this week. That's my win is when you do stuff, you don't know who's watching you and you don't know who uh, you're inspiring. So go, go, go past the average crowd. Go do something a little different. Um, yeah, you, you might not get people telling you you're an inspiration, uh, but but you do. That one person did it, and that's why we got to the top. Mm. That's great. It's okay to do things that scare you once in a while. Now for you guys. <laughs> John, get in to visit my family in Los Angeles this weekend. Yeah, that's awesome. Adrian says, Rocky, a few days, but excited to hang out with my peers on Sunday <clears throat> at a train the trainer course in Red Deer. Then I'll be certified to teach within my industry association, and I4 is exciting too. Heck yeah. Mark's win is the numbers are dropping, and the hospitals feel like normal, and they're not getting burnt out. Craig says, win for the week. Uh, things are a bit more normal in Alberta. It was great to actually see people's faces. Of course, this show, uh, the community and family. Craig, that is not like, right? Like the you power, keep, the of, power of that. I mean, he spaces. just, he says that in 10 words, but 
this week we here in Alberta our mask mandate was lifted um, and literally just you almost feel eerie walking somewhere and just yeah. being able to see somebody else you just want to give them a hug it's like yeah. I haven't seen a face in months yeah it was pretty special Ken my wind is getting me and my family through our floods I believe he's in Australia and they're experiencing I think they're in fall now um, yeah glad everybody's fine Judd says we learn from our failures uh, more from our failures than we do our successes uh, that was the theme of this week I learned a lot and I'm stronger for the next week beautiful Chaz coming to tracks hanging out with amazing people in this community mm -hmm. uh, uh, we won't read hers <laughs> she's trying to convince me <laughs> so she says Dana if you saw uh, the time in the ice hut it's the same yeah, as the time in the bird blind you'd love it I know I but agree. I'm seeing time on, on a mountain is everything it's, has uh, its time and place that's right <laughs> Oh, uh, Chris, my wind will come tomorrow. I'm going up to a fine lake up the road with my water master and catch some fine cut bows. I think the devil bug will get that done. Nice. Where are you living? <laughs> it's Colorado. He's oh, coming Colorado. up this summer. Justin Cole, win. The wife and me both got a day off tomorrow. I'm going to take the pup ice fishing for some much needed time together. Super stoked. Ah, that's awesome, Justin. Yeah, 360 views. There's my mountain brother. <laughs> Flags blowing, uh, rock mountain gardens crushing PVs and pretzel fries. <laughs> if you know, you know. So the base of the mountain is uh, the Iron Goat. Oh, yeah, Iron Goat. And so halfway up, I said to Aaron, what, why don't we go eat at the Iron Goat after? Like, we've, we haven't done a mountain that's so, like, in town. <laughs> yeah, you could actually do it. And uh, it almost turned us around a few times. Because we wanted to go get eat down so there, bad. Get eaten. <laughs> and then we did. We ran the whole way down, and I am paying for it. <laughs> but those pretzel fries, they were good. Oh, Jake. Oh, no. Today I said farewell to my dog, Duke. My heart hurts, but thankful he isn't struggling anymore. But my win is sitting here with a great, peop a great group of people. And we are all too familiar with We're that in the last couple fresh. of years. Uh, I feel your pain, man. Don't... Uh, I could give any advice, um, lean into it, enjoy the fact that it hurts because you loved your dog and the memories you have. People will say to you, it was just a dog. Um, just slough them off because uh, they've never had one then or not one that matters. So I'm very sorry to hear of your loss and it is every bit as hard to lose your, your pup as anything else. So yeah, but feel the feels uh, because it means they meant something and yeah. that's honoring your pet and I will say this, people will say, remember the good times, and you want to punch them right in the butt. <laughs> um, it, it slowly, slowly, those those will be the persistent memories over the pain. And uh, and, and I always say, like, we know our, our dogs aren't going to live to 50. Like, 10 to 15 years for most pets is, like, phenomenal. Um, and so when they're hit, like, 12, 13, it's like, and, you know... Tim went through this last year at the end of Thursday Night Live. I went through this last summer and uh, it doesn't make it easier, but live in the pain and remember the memories will start to be the prominent memories for you. Yeah, and that's all. And that's awesome. Um, yeah. The perspective is interesting because once you get once you get through that a little bit and you realize like I'm in a place now where we just got a new puppy and now I see my my other dog feels old and yeah. you just get this mindset of I think I'm way more grateful for every day and I'm thankful that I had to go through that to notice that to, to just take every day with your with your whatever it is your wife your parents your whoever totally. um, but those people that are there every day for you Scott's still recovering from your ruse at the start that Tim was gone and I didn't <laughs> care goodness gracious <laughs> uh, yeah. some Colleen love, some love for Jacob yeah um, sorry prayers Thoughts with you guys tomorrow, heavy day. Are there little guys going tomorrow? Uh, oh, tough. Jim. Says, my win was in Mexico. A young family from Alaska asked if their nine-year-old son could hang around me in the morning uh, in the surf to watch me fish, so let him use a spare rod. And the first day he caught his first fish, he was all smiles and his parents had tears. Very great moment. That's awesome, That's Jim. awesome. <laughs> That's so cool, man. Troy, my win is putting in an order at Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, supporting the sponsors. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks Much for doing that, Troy. Much appreciated by everybody. Yeah. 
Mr. Allison, no biggies this week. Just grateful for health and happiness and being here with the TNL fam. Have a great week. Roger, life is good. Just riding a period of peace and calm. Spring is here, having a couple of fishing getaways planned. We as a family seem to be on the same page together. Nice. Shelly, my win tonight. Received my book of fly recipes, shirt and stickers, which will look wicked on my kayak. Thanks, guys. That's awesome. Make, <laughs> make sure you guys tag us in your photos. Yeah, we want to see uh, that stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Win. No more masks. Get out for another day to slay. Slay day. <laughs> oh, fish, fish, slay. Took the family out to a movie at the theater and got to see some family and friends we haven't seen in a while. Unfortunately, it was at a funeral. But that's all part of life. And Thursday night with all of you. Love people catch fish. Got a new to me bass guitar and really uh, trying to learn some funky bass lines. This whole Merkin thing might be a sign why I'm feeling so groovy this week. Uh-huh. <laughs> also, it was great getting up to see Rocky Mountain Fly Shop and going out to lunch with my daughter. Yes, mm. the power of a massless smile. Mm. Mr. Pichet, win for me was attending a weekend energy function at Kananaskis at my table with three women, one from Poland, one from Ukraine, and one from Russia, and listening to their stories of the three of them hugging and dancing at the end of the night. Mm. Love people, hate politicians. <laughs> well... <laughs> We, we saw a group of people from Ukraine on the mountain, too. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wait, I can tell the accent. I'm like, where are you from? They're like, Ukraine. I'm like, oof. Best of luck. Yeah. Best of Jesus loves you. I didn't yeah. know. And Aaron looked say? at me. I'm like, I'm not sure what I, I walked. I just jumped off a cliff. Yeah. Flyfisher54, my win for the week was finally winning a bingo and choosing the You're wrong You're not door. reading the one I put on the screen. <laughs> I didn't know. John oh, says, John, John I love you. Oh, geez. I love says, right my back. win made he's, a safe trip from Michigan to Texas for a month of warm weather. <laughs> he's holding his cursor over the one I'm supposed to read, and it just happens to not be the one he wants Keep to read. Go ahead now, All Tim. Right. My win of the week was finally winning bingo and choosing the wrong door, but still getting the thrill of the win. <laughs> Oh, oh and awesome. uh, flyfishing fifty four. Make sure you send me an email tnl at flyfishingbover dot com so I can get you your stickers. Yeah. Uh, Barry you. says our win is the bus is booked for ten days in the next five weeks. Just seeing people smiling again, love it. Yeah, that's my <laughs> win. My other win yeah. is fun, and you crazy guys. All right, well, Ken, Ken, you didn't come here by accident. Never. Michael says, my win was I just got back from Daytona Raceway for the Daytona 500. Great time. Uh, that sounds like it. Tim is getting, is COVID getting better? I worked a night shift uh, in the ICU last night, and the number of patients has decreased drastically. Be safe, everyone. Get out and fish. Yeah. Mr. Beggs, he says, my win, I've had three fish on my bucket list. This 20 pound pike jumbo perch in a lake trout. While trying for the pike, I hooked into what I thought was a small pike to pull out a jumbo perch. Darn near lost my mind. <laughs> Got to experience with a great buddy to boot. We had no idea they were even in the lake. That's there awesome. There go. Cam's three days on the snow to soothe the soul. Mm. Mr. Victor Edmonds, my win would have to be spending the last seven days in Mexico with my true love, my wife, and catching up with each other, not <clears throat> not be able to travel much uh, for the last couple years. Yeah. Justin's win is he got his new book, Death, Tax, and Leaky Waiters. It's going to be some uh, chill, quiet nights in the future. So to add to that, the old Leaky Waiters just like a, a boat or raft that I told you death taxes all the horrible things <laughs> Mr. Rodrigo says my win uh, live it as if it were the last day with my wife fishing a river hopefully it will be like that for everyone yeah. that's heaven well folks we're going to give it about 12 more seconds for the winds to come in and then we got to get over and see our friends at Tracks Pub mm-hmm. and remember it's pizza Pizza, pizza, Wings, pizza, pizza, pizza. good stuff over there. Good stuff. Uh, we do love oh, you guys. It's been a great week. It's so good to see all you guys here again. Always just, I don't know, we're just so blessed. 100%. Blessed to have you here. Um, to have you part of this journey that we're all on together. 
Terry says, my win was seeing smiling faces and getting my gear ready to surf fish in Mexico next week. Man, everybody's getting to go out fishing. I know. We're just I tell them Dana it. today, I got to get out fishing. Well, Cam's uh, Hankiversary is soon. Oh. It's in like a three or four days. Yeah. Well, we have to so go Hankiversary it up. The river. All right, folks, friends, family, mm. everybody who's here hanging out with us tonight. Your time is valuable. We appreciate you guys spending it with us. Yeah. And uh, if you're new here, uh, it's not an accident. It's a purpose. And this TNL fam will embrace you. They will love on you. They will share fishing knowledge with you. They will make your Thursdays and the rest of your week that much better. So make sure you do come back next week. Uh, to everybody who got kits from Wolf Creek Anglers this week. Uh, to Dante Rodriguez, who won the Season 4 kit. Uh, we appreciate you guys, Jason down at Wolf Creek Anglers, to all of our sponsors, Rocky Mountain Fly Shop, Watermaster, Norvice, uh, Fly Fusion, and Shore Fishing. We appreciate you guys because without you, uh, we wouldn't be here. That's uh, fact. So, yeah. If you need mm. to chat, if you need to whatever, reach out this week. You guys can find us. Uh, search our names. We're on social media. Mm -hmm. um, Don't hesitate. Do your best. To be somebody's reason to smile this week because in Alberta, you don't have to don your mask unless you're in Edmonton. <laughs> That's soon to be gone, too. All right. <laughs> uh, love you guys. Yeah, we'll you see guys. you at Tracks in 10 minutes or next Thursday. Next week. Superhero night. Don't forget to Superhero night. Remember, dress up. There are okay? prizes. And the silly legs bonefish fly and the simple golden stone. Oh, Until goodness. then. Superheroes out. I can feel my body fold against the concrete, but I can't seem to get enough. My mind is fixed on what it wants. I just let you beat me. Look can be deceiving. Let you get the best of me. In bed with my worst enemy. This is a no go. I just can take hold. This is a danger zone. Back up and get me home. This is a no go. I just can take hold.